lurking around the grocery store aisles, slithering through the hallways at school. An untruthful, attention-seeking menace aims to suck you in and never let you go. Sensational news, more commonly known as tabloids, are all around. Tabloids, in the form of popular social media applications, have become daily routines for many, taking hours out of their days. Four hours at most. <laughs> I get the weekly report from my iPhone, and usually it's about, on average, one to two hours. I would say I'm probably on social media about two to three hours a day. But what we don't always see are the lies behind the pretty picture. When I think of a tabloid, I think of a magazine, but I think of a magazine that lies <laughs> and that I would like see at a, at a grocery store, a combination of, um, you know, news that, news that seems real but is actually um, exaggerated to get a reaction from the public. So. So why are these magazines, social media accounts, and news networks able to get away with these lies? It sets an unrealistic standard to our younger generation, giving them false advertising, essentially. The fact of the matter is, it is difficult to prove that, as a public figure, the blatantly false statement or altered photo hurt their reputation in any measurable matter. If the public figure could somehow prove that, in fact, it did hurt their reputation, they could sue the tabloid publication for libel. Libel is defined as written defamation of character. Slander is the spoken counterpart to libel. Search engines and algorithms specifically like target you and they know what you want some of the time. Altered and photoshopped images can affect teens and adults alike, shifting not only their view of others but their view of themselves. Altered images, they never show the real picture, obviously, and that can really take a hit on the people who see. These are icons and actors and singers and artists and directors that people look up to. People try and be like their role models. So when they're altered to be something unrealistic or a standard that's false, it can't help anyone in that scenario. I don't find it healthy for anybody, um, men, women, all genders, whatever. I have body confidence issues just because of these pictures and I'm always looking in the mirror and this could be thinner here, I could have a more of a thing here, I should eat healthier here, I'm getting a little bigger here. I know that it's not like how it really is, but I get so down on myself because I can't look the way I want to or I don't have the perfect shape that I want to and it, it really harms not just me but a lot of people's mental state. Terrible to give inaccurate representations of, of human beings and what we are expected to look like and dress like and act like and it's really dangerous for uh, especially for young people to see that. It takes time and patience to cope with society's solid standards that are deep-rooted in negative and unattainable ideals. But how? People shouldn't be so hard on themselves and that, you know, you have to work with what you have. And if you're unhappy with something, work to what you want, but don't go extreme. Just, you know, be happy with what you have because it's one body and that's all you're going to get. What makes you feel beautiful? I feel most beautiful when I go out with my friends. When I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> when I'm doing my best, that's when I personally feel beautiful or like when I'm celebrating something or when I feel joy. Students hold themselves up to the ideals that they see. Um, that they see projected in the media, and I, I think it has a, a negative impact overall. This is Taylor Lee for the Pony Express, signing off.